Well, alternate. So, Chris, can you introduce yourself and tell me about your MND research team at King's? Yes, thanks, Liv. Um, yes, my name is Christopher Shaw. I'm a professor of neurology at uh, King's College London, uh, and I'm the director of the Morris Wall Clinical Neurosciences Institute and the DR United Kingdom Dementia Research Institute at King's as well. And uh, I have a team of 25 um, young scientists who are working solely on motor neuron disease. And 90% of them are working on developing gene therapies for motor neuron disease. That's, that's really interesting. Can you tell us, MND was first identified in 1874. Why has it been so hard to develop any effective treatments? That is a very difficult question. Um, there are very few treatments for degenerative neurological disorders. If you think about Alzheimer's disease, or Parkinson's disease, there are some symptomatic treatments, but very little in the way of treatments that alter the course of the disease. And the brain is a very complex organ and it's very inaccessible. It's hidden behind you know, the skull and the blood brain barrier so that a lot of drugs don't get into the brain. Uh, and I think for a variety of reasons, that's made it difficult to treat. And we really haven't had a really good understanding of the disease mechanisms to figure out how to correct them uh, and, and develop a therapy in that respect. So the greatest progress in the last 20 years has really come from genetics. And my own team have been involved in discovering a lot of genes for, for motor neuron disease. And once you know the gene defect, you can start to put that into cells and into mice and see whether they develop the disease and you can understand how the disease happens in those tissues and those cells and then figure out how you might correct that. And so Chris, to what extent is MND caused by gene mutations? Yeah, so we know that we can detect gene defects in about 20% uh, of people who have the disease. Uh, there may be other people who have gene defects of genes that we haven't yet discovered, uh, but that are present. Now, as you probably know, there's a small number of people, about 5 to 10%, who've got a family history of motor neuron disease. And that's clearly been genetic and often passed down from generation to generation. And of those people who've got a very clear family history, we can give them an answer as to the genetic cause in about 70% of cases. All right. You, you mentioned mice, Chris, a minute ago. Um, how, why are mice used to model MND in, in therapies that will be used for humans? Yeah, so what we've discovered, and it's not just in motor neuron disease, but other diseases as well, is if you give the mouse the human gene, it'll often develop a disease that very much looks like the human disease. And that's true for a variety of different gene mutations that we've discovered in motor neuron disease. When we put those into mice, they develop a motor neuron disease as well. That helps us because it shows us exactly how the disease process develops, but it also gives us a chance to intervene with a new therapy that might change the course of the disease in the mouse. Then of course, the hope is that if we can get that therapy to the right place in man at the right time, we can change, change the disease course in our patients. Chris, in simple language, how do gene therapies work? Yeah, so there's two major approaches. One is to use a tiny fragment of DNA uh, to target mRNA. Let me explain what mRNA is. So basically, we know that the genetic code is sitting in the nucleus in, in chromosomes, uh, but the protein making machinery is out in the cell body outside the nucleus. And you have to get a message from the DNA to tell the cell what protein to make. And that message is called messenger RNA. So the DNA gets copied into this tiny fragment of, of messenger RNA, gets trafficked out of the nucleus down to the protein making machinery, the ribosomes, and there it makes, makes uh, the protein. Now, in the case of a genetic mutation, uh, there's a mutant gene in the DNA. So every RNA is going to have a mutation and then it makes a mutation in the protein as well, often just changing a single amino acid but that changes the behavior of the protein and that protein can in turn be toxic. The other cause of gene defect is that the, the gene in, in, in the DNA is defective and doesn't make a proper protein. So there isn't enough uh, RNA making protein and so it's a deficiency. There's, so the two problems are one is not enough protein being made and the other is that there's a toxic mutant protein being made. So gene therapy is targeting uh, the messenger RNA with this tiny fragment of uh, of antisense bind to the RNA and lead to its uh, degradation, 
so you stop making the, the toxic uh, uh, mutant protein. So that's one strategy. The other strategy is, well, so that's, a, that's a great therapy. And indeed, we're running a, a couple of trials in motor neuron disease at the moment, targeting very specific genes to knock down their RNA and prevent those proteins being made. Uh, but it means we have to inject people into the spinal fluid through a lumbar puncture every four to six weeks, which is quite an ordeal. Um, most of our patients are incredibly brave and, and, and will tolerate this. Uh, but this would be, you know, lifelong, which is which is quite quite something. So we've taken a different approach, which is to use a virus as a Trojan horse to put the gene that's missing back into those patients' nerve cells, or to make a little antisense version uh, that would knock down the RNA and stop the mutant protein being made, and that would just be a one-time injection, which of course would be a great advantage in terms of challenges of lumbar puncture and, and those therapies and also might be a significant uh, you know cost saving as well but this is a very tricky and a very new branch of science uh, and and there's still quite a bit of work to be done thanks for that explanation can you tell us you you've talked about the anti-sense trials that uh, some of which you're involved in at the moment can you say a bit more about those and, and maybe what's different about your approach yeah so the anti-sense trials um it, it's a very powerful uh, little fragment of DNA that we're giving in an injection into the spinal fluid. That goes into the brain. It probably um, gets access to most of the cells. And inside the cell, it's able to target the RNA. And when this little DNA fragment uh, binds to an RNA fragment, um, the, the cell thinks it's a virus and it brings a, an enzyme along, uh, which degrades the RNA and stops making that protein. And the, the little DNA fragment, the antisense, survives that and can go on and bind to another RNA. So it can keep working for weeks and sometimes months uh, and be very effective. Now that tells us firstly two things. One is that you can knock down a gene and it's safe. That's pretty good, a very important piece of information. It doesn't do the patient harm. And the second is that it might actually have an impact on disease. And so we can measure that in terms of how people progress in terms of their symptoms and uh, in particular in motor neuron disease, their, their strength. Um, but also we've got some biomarkers that we can look at, proteins in the spinal fluid that tell us whether nerve cells are degenerating or not. So that's another really powerful tool to tell us whether the drug is, is having an effect. The, the viral uh, approach is a single injection. And in our case, we're actually going to be injecting into the brain or the spinal cord itself. So that then delivers the gene throughout the nervous system. So it's a, it's a bold approach, uh, but if it does work, then it's a one and done, you know, single shot therapy for life, potentially. Gosh, that sounds incredible. But uh, what, what are the next steps to develop a new G therapy for, for MND? Yeah, so um, we, we've got lots of targets. So we've now about 10 or 12 different genes that I think definitely cause motor neuron disease. Most of them we need to knock down. Some of them we could supplement. Uh, and we have mice that we've made over time that develop the disease, and we would like to develop these therapies either to supplement or to knock down in those mice. So, you know, that's a, that's a challenge uh, to make all those different viruses to, to then, you know, grow up the mouse colony, treat the mice, follow them over a period of time, see that, that the, the virus uh, therapy works, uh, and then show that it's safe. So that process is ongoing. We've already started uh, three programs, um, taking both those approaches, uh, and we're getting some very exciting early results. Uh, we're also collaborating with other groups internationally to try and uh, move this further forward. But actually, you know, we've got another 10 or, or so genes that we would like to then tackle as well. And, and I think it's about really you know, ramping this up so that we can, we can treat a number of different people rather than just people with a very few select gene uh, defects. Right, that's, that's really interesting. Um, so, you know, there are a number of steps as you've described. When do you think viral gene therapy will be tested in MND patients? Wow, okay. So the most exciting um, study I have seen um, is, is on spinal muscular atrophy, which is an infantile or, or childhood onset motor neuron disease. Uh, and this group in the States um, decided to put in a virus, the gene that was missing in those children. Uh, so they put the survival motor neuron gene in this virus, the same virus 
we're using. They injected it intravenously and remarkably, it actually crossed into the brain in infants. And some of those children have virtually been cured. Without that therapy, um, very few of them survived beyond the first year and almost none beyond the second year. And yet some of these children are now running around. Um, it's, it's just the most remarkable, uh, extraordinary result. So, you know, motor neuron disease in adults may be a little bit more difficult to get the virus into the brain in quite the same way. I think there's something about infants that make them much more able to take up this sort of virus. Um, but we are working in now in sheep to show that we are able to do this in adult sheep. And sheep have a brain that's not as big as ours, uh, but their spinal cord is actually longer than ours. And so it's, it's, a, it's a much better model than just testing in our mice. So do you really think a cure is, is possible? And how far are we away from that? Ah, that's the, the biggest question of all. So I think we will, be, we will be trialing gene therapies within the next two years in motor neuron disease. Um, using the viral vector. Uh, showing that they really work and that they are safe will probably take a couple of years. Um, but what I have seen from at least the spinal muscular atrophy study is that almost as soon as they showed a really powerful effect, uh, and it was, the, the first study was only in, in uh, about uh, 20, 20 patients, um, you know, that got licensed very quickly. It's far faster than most small molecule drug therapies uh, that have been tested. And of course, the need in motor neuron disease, the need for speed is, is great because people don't have very long to, to really, um, you know, get a treatment in early and, and, and rescue uh, their, their muscle strength. So I'm optimistic um, that there'll be trials that at least tell us whether these therapies are effective within the next two to three years. Uh, and if they are effective, you know, then it's about rolling it out and making them available to people and hopefully, you know, making it affordable. That's Maybe a last question, because what about the, the funding challenges? Um, at the moment, it seems that most funding for uh, MND, certainly in the UK, comes from philanthropic uh, sources. Yeah. What kind of effort is needed? So we have had funding from the government through the Medical Research Council in particular over a long period of time and indeed the Wellcome Trust have supported us in the past and of course you know there are other charitable organizations in the UK that have been helping us and they've been very important the Motor Neuron Disease Association and the Doty Foundation in particular have funded our work in developing this gene therapy. So that's the challenge you know we have the ideas we have some of the tools we just need more hands in the lab uh, and money to make the virus uh, to be able to test these therapies out. So everything is there in place um, we just need more resource to be able to uh, take this to the next step. Thanks so much for your time. And you're making us feel optimistic, at least. Uh... Yeah, it's a very exciting time. Um, this is a really important area. Uh, and, I, and I think we, you know, we're taking a very um, strong approach to this therapy to, to knock the disease out and where it starts at the genetic level. Uh, and we believe that that will then be rolled out to people who don't even have an, a known gene defect as well, because we know some other genes that are in the critical pathway that can make a very big difference to the disease progression. So it's not just for people with rare gene mutations. These, these therapies uh, we're working on at the moment uh, may well be useful for everybody who has this disease. So uh, it's the most exciting time in, in the 25 years I've been working in the field. That's that's fantastic news, really. Yeah. That's fantastic. So right. thanks, thank you. For